at the day of the French Aloysius Gonzaga on um, 4th November 1740 at the Roman Church, uh, at the grave of Saint Aloysius Gonzaga at the Roman Church of Saint Ignatius. And as a final uh, act of his Jesuit formation, uh, formation was the uh, solemn vows at the age of uh, 33 in 1744. Of crucial importance for Bosco's scientific career at the Roman College was his encounter with the professor of mathematics, Orazio Borgondio, at the second year of philosophy. Boscovic closely observed the scientific production of his professor in the period 1731-1734. During the magisterium, Borgondio encouraged his best students to work scientific work. When in 1740 Borgondio had become a rector of the Collegium Romanum, he appointed Boscovic professor of mathematics. Also, he was still a third year student of theology. As professor at the Collegium Romanum, Boscovic was to experience three heavy blows. The first took place at the beginning of 1743, after the first expertise on the cause of the cracks on the dome of St. Peter's Basilica, composed by Boscovich and signed by three mathematicians. Father Giovanni Battista Fowler, professor of mathematics at the Collegium Romano, had an anonymous, anonymous pamphlet printed against the new mathematical approach to the stability of the famous building. The second blow came in 1746, when quite inappropriately, Boscovich and his student and compatriot Ivan Luca Zuzovic competed against each other for the priority of publishing the results of the archaeological excavation of the ancient villa on Tusplu near Krastat. The sudden death of young Zuzovic was a shattering blow to the whole Jesuit community, and uh, Borskowitz in particular, who completely abandoned the idea of publishing the extensive material that he had collected on the archaeological side. The third blow Borskowitz experienced in 1754, when uh, at the end of the academic year, Borskowitz's dissertation, The Continuitatis Lege, and synopsis fitness and general by Boscovich's young follower Carlo Benvenuti were publicly defended. In this paper, Boscovich, and to a greater extent Benvenuti, tried to counter the objections to Boscovich's theory of forces and his points of matter raised by the pirate Giovanni Battista Scavella. In the first volume of his textbook, Physica Generalis, published in 1754, at the beginning of his book. After the public defense, the Jesuit superiors decided to remove Benvenuti from the Roman College, Rome, and teaching. Benvenuti was punished, but uh, the message was addressed to Boscovic. That is why Boscovic intervened for Benvenuti all the way to the Pope, who ordered the Jesuit general to revoke his decision and to open for Benvenuti a chair in a liturgy at the Roman College, not in, study, uh, in the study of philosophy, but in study of theology. Despite severe blows, for Boscovich the Roman College was and forever remained Salsa Mina as he wrote to his brother Varro at the end of his Roman professorship. To the end of London, Boscovich traveled dressed in his formal secular attire with a wig and a sword. But the mid, but the mere glance at him revealed his Jesuit identity. When on 5 June 1760, he was invited to dinner at the Royal Society Club. Sitting next to the president, Earl of Macclesfield, his presence was officially registered in the following way, Father Boscovich, the second line. 
In the official proposition for his election to the membership uh, uh, of the Royal Society of 12 June 1760, it uh, is used uh, abbreviation for Societatis Jesus Socius, member of the Society of Jesus. It is in the these three letters at the end of the first line. Then, on 10 December, London saw the publishing of the first edition of his epic, The Solis of Luna de Festivus. The contents of the title page included also his Jesuit identity, Societatis Jesu, of which he immediately and his pride informed his brother Bach. From 1736 to 1786 were the five most fruitful decades of Roger Gorskovich, which he spent mainly in Rome, but also in Padilla, Milan, Paris, Vienna, and London. The superiors of the Society of Jesus, as well as heads of state in Europe, assigned him important offices. Five offices. First, public professor of mathematics at the philosophy course of the Roman College. Uh, two, de two decades. The second, professor of mathematics at the revived University of Pavia under Austrian rule. Third, founder of the observatory in Brera in 1755. Fourth, professor of applied mathematics which meant, according to the curriculum, he thought, being professor of optics and astronomy at the Pope's course in Milan, Scuola Palatina, only four years. And finally, director of optics in the French Navy from 1774 to 1784. He took, undertook three scientific journals a surveying and map-making expedition from Rome to Rome. Secondly, a journey for research and diplomatic reasons to Lucca and Vienna for the purpose of settling a hydraulic engineering dispute between Lucca and Tuscany. And the third, a study journey around the scientific capitals of Europe, including Paris, London, Istanbul, and Warsaw. Now I will talk about Borskowicz's contribution to the natural sciences, which includes contributions to natural philosophy, astronomy, mathematics, geophysics, and meteorology. Along with his lectures on mathematics and astronomy at the Collegium Romanum, particularly from 1743 on, Borskowicz was occupied by key topics of natural philosophy, force and matter. In the treatises, the Viribus Viris, only in forces in 1745, and Dissertationes de Lumine Par Secunda, the second part of the dissertation on life, in 1748, he developed his original theory of forces in five steps. First, Analogy and the simplicity of nature, inspired by Newton as a general epistemological principle. 